Jeff Kaufman. Uh, he's one of the co-leaders of the uh, Boston Effective Altruism Group. Uh, we're here in New Haven, Connecticut at Yale University. Uh, we just had a conversation with the Life Worth Living class. Uh, Jeff, it's so great to have you here. Thanks, glad to be here. Um, you know, you were talking a bit about, um, about your life and some of the ways you and your wife have chosen to live your life in a kind of remarkable way for those on the, on the outside. Uh, we can talk about whether or not you think that's all that uh, remarkable, but, um, but it is remarkable. You've, you've chosen to give away 50% of your income and live on uh, a, a very small amount of it um, in, order to, in order to be able to give away as much as possible. Um, that's led you to make some different sorts of life decisions that maybe some other people have, have made. Um, what, what led you to decide to live life that way? So, um, t t to me it came down to, to sort of really internalizing uh, the degree to which my life uh, was going a lot better than other people's. Mm. Um, the degree of suffering in the world is just pretty enormous and saddening and shocking. Um, and we're also in a position where we can do something about that. Mm. It's, it's not just something to feel bad about, it's something where like, no, we can, we can try and figure out what most of the needs doing and try and make as much progress as we can. Mm. Um, and so I, um, that's sort of where this comes from for me, mm. uh, trying to see how I can help. Mm. And so what, how, do you, how do you think about how you can help? What is it that you're trying to maximize? Um, so there are like various things that make your life good, like mm -hmm. not being in pain, having enough to eat, um, having stuff to do with your time that you enjoy, and that they all contribute to varying degrees. Um, but like the sort of like Maslow's hierarchy of needs is like mm -hmm. pretty clear here. It's like if you don't like if you don't have enough food, you're you're not going to be able to uh, have fun sitting around playing music. Um, so. For the most part, looking to figure out like how can we help, how can we figure out what needs to be different so that people will be able to have their most basic needs met, um, and then we can move on to trying to figure out uh, higher ones. And also, people can uh, once people have their more basic needs met, they can do. They are no longer as sort of needing external assistance from mm. people at the lowest way. Mm. So what are the sorts of organizations that you give to? What are some of the causes that you support? So we tend to give to uh, charities that are recommended by uh, GiveWell, which is a charity evaluator, um, mostly uh, sort of global health and nutrition charities. Um, so I would say the one we've given the most to is the Against Malaria Foundation. Mm -hmm. um, they distribute uh, anti-malarial bed nets so that people don't get bitten by mosquitoes and get malaria. Um, while they are asleep, because mosquitoes are more active at night. Mm. Um, so you sleep under the net, and then um, the main effect of this is that, um, so I mean, it, fewer people are getting malaria, but like the sort of biggest effect this has is that malaria um, tends to kill a lot of children. Um, it's, uh, if you get malaria as an adult, it's likely to be really, really unpleasant, but it probably won't kill you. Whereas if you get it as a five-year-old, it's actually pretty likely to kill you. Um, so the, the biggest impact of um, the Against Malaria Foundation is reducing deaths from children under five. Um, but it also does a lot to um, make it so other people don't have to have malaria, which is bad in any age. Hmm. So um, on one of your profiles, I think I saw online, it, you say that your, your philosophy of, of life is utilitarian consequentialism. You said, well, or at least I think that covers most of, <laughs> most of what's important. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I would say I'm uh, pretty well covered by like a, a totally utilitarian. Uh, I'm sort of conflicted between sort of like the distinction between like um, sort of a hedonic approach mm. um, or a preference approach. Like you can come up with scenarios that make me think either one of them doesn't really fit what I think. But can you describe that difference a bit? Sure. So um, a hedonic utilitarian says, well, uh, joy is good, suffering is bad. So we sh so in general. Um, a world with more joy and less suffering is good, and roughly you should go over all the people and you should um, uh, figure out like roughly how happy they are, and a better world is one in which you get a higher total for that, um, and you should make the actions that uh, give you a higher total. Um, uh, in a preference-based approach, um, 
instead of looking at how happy versus sad people are, you look at how well their preferences are met. And for the most part, these like align pretty well. People tend to have preferences for uh, things that are enjoyable and against suffering. Um, but then when you come to situations where like people's preferences are not really matching up with what makes people happy, mm -hmm. um, you can come up with sort of like thought experiments where you would, wh which which can push you either way. Mm -hmm. um, and for the most part, this doesn't actually have an effect on my giving because the kinds of things I'm talking about doing are like. Um, totally in accord with people's preferences and totally in accord with what makes people happy mm -hmm. um, to the best of my ability. Mm -hmm. they, they're not really fighting with mm -hmm. each other, but like when you sort of really dive into the uh, sort of philosophy of it, um, you can you can, you can can get tangled up in a way that I'm not really sure how to get out of, but mm -hmm. I'm also not a philosopher. Mm -hmm. You talk about these two poles of, of uh, suffering and joy on the, on the other hand. I mean, it seems that most of your giving and most of uh, the effective altruist community is is organized around alleviating suffering uh, rather than promoting joy. Um, why, wh why, why is that? Um, I don't. I don't think it's like an intentional choice to say like we only care about suffering. Like joy doesn't matter. I think it's that like in general, when people's basic needs are met, they have a pretty good innate capacity for joy. Hmm. Like people can have fun together doing all sorts of things if they have enough to eat and. Um, are uh, protected from the elements and are not sick um, and are not caring for sick relatives. Like all of those things grind you down. Um, I think, uh, so, so for the most part, I don't sort of see joy as needing as much help mm -hmm. um, as, as preventing suffering. Um, but if there was like something that was going to bring lots and lots of people a lot of joy that like we were not doing through like some easy to avoid thing, um, and you could change it, and then like everyone would get this thing that they loved. Like, um, I could be convinced that that was what needed doing. Yeah. yeah. We talked a little bit with the students about uh, kind of an epidemic of depression in kind of developed, mm -hmm. especially in developed societies. Is that a kind of case that like maybe having our basic needs met isn't enough to kind of naturally well, supply us opportunities for I joy? Mean, helping our having your basic needs met certainly helps. Of course, no um, doubt, right? <laughs> no disagreement. Right. Um, <laughs> uh, but. I mean, yes, for, for a lot of people, that's not enough. A lot of people, like, you look at their life and you say, like, there is no reason you should be sad all the time. Like, from an external, like, mm. objective view, like, everything in your life is fine. You're one of the richest 5% of the people in the world. Like, you have a great job that looks like it should be fulfilling. And, like, yet you are sad all the time. Oh, mm. there's this thing called depression. Okay, this mm. is very complicated. And uh, I think if there was, like, uh, if we had figured out a way to sort of solve depression, that would mm. totally be worth it. Um, Depression is something that affects lots of people in the first world, which means there are a lot of people working on it because mm. there are a lot of wealthy, depressed people mm. and a lot of like uh, people who have good insurance that covers mental health issues who are depressed. So if you figure out how to make progress on depression, mm. there actually is a market for that. Mm. Um, and mm. people do come up with new drugs for it. And Philanthropy isn't required. Yeah, I mean, yeah. which isn't to say that philanthropy like couldn't help, mm -hmm. but like if you look at like how much money is currently in this, and then you look at like how much money is involved in like treating schistosomiasis or mm. some other neglected tropical disease, mm. like uh, things that mostly affect poor people tend to be uh, overlooked. Mm. Mm. So in the in the course we talk about um, uh, three kind of dimensions of of flourishing human life. We talk about uh, life that is going well, the circumstances of life being maybe as one wants them or as, as is best for human flourishing, uh, life uh, being led well, exercising agency in the right sort of way, and life feeling good, feeling maybe as it ought. Um, from, from, your, from your point of view, what, is, what does it mean when, you, when I say that phrase? What, is, what does it kind of bring to mind for you when I say, uh, kind of picture life going well? What does a life going well look like? Um. So there, there, there are a lot of things in there. Like um, there are a lot of things that in my life that I think of, for example, mm. that I think of as like that contributes to my perception that my life is going well. And other things that I think, if that were not that way, I think my life would be going better. Um, it seems like it's it's pretty complicated. There are lots of things mm. in there. Um, Again, the sort of like basic needs bits are easy to think about. Mm -hmm. Like um, if suddenly my life did not involve uh, being able to sleep at night because um, 
my kid forgot how to fall asleep at night. Um, that would have a large effect on how I thought my life was going. That happens from um, time to time. It does, yes. <laughs> um, or if like our hot water stopped working and I stopped being able to take warm showers, like I would have strong opinions about that. Um, but but a lot of the other things are, are much like people, uh, so for example, like how much time at work I spend like in a flow state mm -hmm. versus um, constantly getting interrupted by things like has an effect. Um, there are probably other things like that that like people don't really understand because like mm -hmm. people weren't talking about flow 20 years ago. Um, I don't really understand. Yeah. Um, when you think about life led well, you've thought a lot about this, about how to act rightly and, and kind of uh, your, our responsibilities to one another. What is the kind of core of that? Yeah. So uh, I think as someone um, who is really very lucky on a sort of mm. global scale uh, in terms of like how much um, how much influence I have, how much resources I have, how much ability to change how things work. Um, I, I, I think I have an obligation to be trying to uh, trying to change things so that they work mm. better for people who things are not currently working well for. Um, and uh, this isn't sort of like a a globally applicable thing like um, I, I mean I, th I think helping others is important mm -hmm. um, but I think uh, people who are um, like like rich first worlders especially mm -hmm. um, are just in a position where like they have so much more than everyone else that it's it's really uh, it would kind of be it's sort of unconscionable for, for people to uh, hold on to what they have not share not help others mm -hmm. um, and when you're doing that, I also think that it, it's really only fair to um, to do it in the way that is going to help others the most for the amount of time and money and mm -hmm. self-sacrifice you're willing to mm -hmm. put in. Uh, you really uh, you sort of owe it to the people you're trying to help to figure out uh, among the different things you could do uh, where things will go the farthest um, and, and really try and do a little optimization. Mm -hmm. And then finally, with life feeling good, um, there's actually been a lot of research out there these days about um, hey, what, uh, does it does it uh, do we are we happier when we are charitable? Um, uh, how important to you is 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 it that your life feel good? Is that something you should pay attention to, or is that something? How, how does that uh, f factor in for you? So life feeling good um, is is both like. Are you having fun, et cetera? Mm -hmm. And it also includes things like, do you feel like you're doing the right thing? Mm -hmm. And for me, if I like stopped doing, if I stopped donating, I would feel like I was doing the wrong thing, um, and that wouldn't feel good. But that really is your second category. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think I think it is important that people live lives that they enjoy. Among other things, people uh, will burn out if they're not doing that, mm -hmm. um, and it's much better to. Uh, try and live your life in a way you'll be able to sustain mm. um, sort of pushing yourself mm. hard enough but not too hard mm. um, so playing music for contra dancing is yeah, actually yeah, an Im yeah. uh, you can give a good utilitarian argument for the value of that because it uh, sustains your ability to continue to do the work that you do I mean I think uh, it's it's a it's an enjoyable thing to do I think it's important for everyone to do things that they enjoy mm. um, I think if you were trying to give utilitarian argument, you would have trouble like showing why this particular option was better than others. Um, but it's it's certainly something I enjoy a lot. Mm -hmm. So, uh, last of all, um, I you know I, I think students were really kind of uh, uh, impacted by uh, the example and the kind of uh, life that you've chosen to to live, the ways that you've structured. You guys have chose, chosen to structure your lives. Um, but it can be quite daunting. Um, if, if you were to give some advice to a student or someone who's watching this, trying to think about what would it mean to take on this way of life, what would your, be your advice in terms of like where they could start, how they could get started down the path towards effective altruism? So um, I think it does depend where in your life you are. So like if I think if you're a student, uh, probably the way you're going to be able to do most good is through your career. Um, and trying to find the career where you're really going to have a lot of impact. And for that, I would suggest looking over the resources. That there's an organization called 80,000 Hours um, that tries to uh, give career advice for students who are, who are looking to have an altruistically motivated career. Mm. Um, and uh, they've, they've thought a lot about this. They have a whole bunch of different career paths. 
Um, and I, I think their stuff is really useful. Mm. I think if you're already sort of more established in your life, um, it's a lot less practical for you to say like, okay, in retrospect, I should have become a biochemist and but and but now I mean now I'm doing this, um, and you have like more things in your life that are hard to move around, um, and so I think if you're if you're sort of older and more established, probably donating is going to be um, the way you can sort of have a difference, ma sort of make a difference with an acceptable level of sacrifice to you, yeah. um, mm -hmm. and I think there. Um, it can be really useful to look at Gibble's recommendations. I was talking mm -hmm. about them before, the, yeah. the charity evaluator, um, and look at the different ways um, you can, uh, the, the, different, the different options out there. Um, so look, there, there are several different charities that they've reviewed um, and have found uh, very effective. Uh, but they work in very different ways, and which one is probably uh, the best by your values will will depend on your values, mm. and so so reading over it and seeing like, okay, how much do I value sort of respecting individual agency mm. um, by directly giving people money versus um, looking at like the best public health research mm. and and uh, trying to um, keep people from getting sick. Mm. Um, so yeah. yeah, great. Well, Jeff, thank you so much for being with us today. Great. Thanks for having me.